Drafting.com, giving you a little breakdown of the double wing offense. So here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a breakdown of the offense that I ran and uh, how I ran it. I coached for a little under a decade. Um, I took Tim Murphy. He was a coach at Clovis East. He had a book. I looked at it. Um, some of the plays were a little bit more uh, difficult for the kids, I can imagine, to learn. Um, also, <laughs> it's hard for the other coaches to sometimes learn it all. They're like, I'm... I'm Line coach, just tell me where to go. I'm like, tell the kids put their hands up. I mean, um, so anyways, uh, this is the offense that I learned how to run. Um, I learned when it comes to uh, elementary school kids, I installed this to, to kindergartners, first graders, second graders. I installed this offense in three days. Had a game on a Saturday, won the game with a group of third and fourth graders. So it's really easy to learn. Let me lead you the way. Also, to me, terminology is one of the keys. You have a bunch of young kids. Sometimes they're all at different learning times of their life. Sometimes people get things a little bit older. Sometimes they get younger. But basic things are like names. So um, I would use words like um, zombie or... Um, I would say something like um, rhino or lion because kids love terminology and then also like memory games. And when it comes down to memory games, you would just use pictures in your mind. So it's easy for the kids to remember it. So everything will start with the R, you're running right. Everything will start with the L, you're going left. Ready? Here we go. So this is going to be the rhino we start off with. So on the um, the wings be the top left and bottom right corner same guy he's gonna go in motion it's gonna be one two three on three should be like down set hike so the lion knows everybody, everybody knows the cadence the pattern that he's gonna have and then if they try to predict it on the defense that's when you start running it on two you know or you don't snap the ball at all and then you get them guessing. So you get a little easy first down when they start trying to predict your snap. You're going to get touchdowns when they start to predict your plays. This whole offense is going to be very, very repetitive. And that's the whole idea. Everything looks the same. See, the guy goes in motion. Quarterback hands off to the inside. But let's overlap this. Here we go. First of all, this is Rhino to the right. Like I said, it starts with the R. The quarterback is always going the opposite direction when he goes because you're going to lead him to a reverse pivot. First, this is a inside handoff, and he's going to block the defensive guy who runs in. Typically, they see this guy in motion. The right defensive end thinks, okay, I'm faster than that guy. I'm going to chase him down. He might be able to, but not if the quarterback peels off and hits him. So he hands off, peels off, and hits him. After a while, you'll see the guy not want to get hit. So here we go. The fullback, we call the sniffer. So he's so close to the quarterback, he can smell him, right? He's in a three-point stance. You almost can't see him, and that is what you want because the lead blocker, pretty much every way the play goes, the fullback goes, he's pretty much a key component to the play. You start predicting it, and that's when you got to start throwing it and the keeper and some other things. Every time they start predicting the play, you run the opposite. And you'll hear them, they'll yell it in, and you'll see people start moving around. They may, they'll stop your play in, in, in the spot. When they stop the play in the spot, that's when you do the, the opposite side. So here we go. The right wing, you know, opposite side of us, the right wing is going to block in. On a run play, he's run in. On a pitch, he pitches out. He runs out on a pitch, okay? So the sniffer is going to run right towards the hole. Inside block, see... The right wing is blocking in, the sniffer is running towards, which would be the six hole, right behind the tackle between the tight end. The tight end is blocking out. 
all three of these players should rotate. All three of these players should know every single play. There's no reason why all three of these players should not know the plays. If someone gets injured, someone gets a little bit better, maybe you want to have a faster guy in the middle, whatever you want to do, you should be able to have six guys be able to play all these positions really easy, rotate them out, wide receivers, all your skilled players, get a lot of people the chance to run the ball. Youth football is about getting kids to love the game in return. Winning and losing, hopefully you do, but the more times they return, the more times they're going to win. So here we go. Quarterback peels off because he is eventually going to hit the guy. Here we go. The quarterback inside handoff, and he should be, boom, blocking the guy who's coming in. Eventually, this guy gets sick of getting hit. you got your quarterback peel off and hit him as hard as possible. Boom. Please don't hit me. I'm the fat guy getting hit, and then eventually the guy will say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go on the inside and chase where the play is going to go because this guy just keeps on hitting me. And that's when the quarterback says, fine, I'm keeping it and going for a touchdown for 60 yards. Like I said, puts him in motion and reverse pivot. You should have your quarterback or two, whoever it is, reverse pivot one side, reverse pivot the other side. Just do it over and over again during practice. Reverse pivot, guy catches it, reset. Go the other side, reverse pivot, reset. You do it over and over again. So here we go. This is going to be for Rocket, like I said. Rocket's in the air. It's a pitch. Goes in motion, pitch. Now here's everybody, right? The right wing. So when he's blocking, the right wing is going to pitch out, means block out. Run in, block in, right? So he's going to, the right wing is going to block out and the tight end is sealing the corner. The blockers, they have two uh, instructions on it. Block in, block out. So, see, the wing ran out. The sniffer ran out. The quarterback does a reverse pivot. pivot he lead blocks. And they run out. And here is your pulling guard. I didn't throw him in because another mask would have really messed up that picture, which was already bad enough as it was. But like I said, here we go. So, all three in motion here, right? Right wing ran out. The sniffer is hitting out. This is outside of the cone because this is a pitch. So, we're trying to get outside. This is the eight hole, somewhere in the outside the tight ends. The tight end is blocking in on this. He's sealing in. Everybody from the tight end left on this play is basically blocking down except for the pulling guard. So as they all run, the tight end blocks towards the line. Everybody blocks in except for the left guard will run upfield and they all have four people over there running. So here's Lion. So we're running to the left quarterback once again, inside handoff, right? He hits what would be the five hole right inside the tight end. The orange cones are basically somewhere around the tight end. Um, I'm six foot two, so obviously this is not set up for um, my size person. If this was adults, I'd be a little bit further out. Um, but giving you an idea, so I can fit on camera. Lion inside handoff, quarterback peels off and hits the blocker. Here's everybody. So once again, the sniffer hidden, can't see him. We're running lion. Lions are on the ground, right? So, and then if it's a run, the blocker who's going to be the left wing on this time is blocking in. The tight end is blocking out. That's the hole. The tight end blocks out, creating the hole, and then the left wing goes right into it, basically seals down the defensive lineman or linebacker, whoever it might be, and then the fullback comes in and finishes them off. So here we go. Motion. Quarterback peels off for the inside handoff. The left wing blocks in while the tight end should be blocking out. The sniffer hits the hole, and the quarterback follows the fullback. Or sorry, the running back follows the fullback. So then once again, this is why the quarterback inside hands off, because this guy's going to try to trail and hit the runner, or just run in, and you hit him over and over again, leading the opportunity for him to second-guess himself. The quarterback can run for a couple yards or a touchdown. So here we go. This is going to be a razor. So in a razor, he's going to the, would be the 
two hole and then laser would be the one hole I give it right to the fullback and your line would basically run away a wedge you could do this at practice this is a fun game for the kids you have them all do the flying V they just set hike and they all wedge towards the um, forward and they just all go forward as fast as possible well, hopefully the this guy goes and blocks it you know passes everybody but inside boom the left wing is going to be running a rocket big hands up you'll see so that was razor and then for laser this kid should be doing a full reverse pivot and blocking out but he gets a little lazy there we go there's razor to the right that should be like that in opposite direction same exact thing but it runs the wrong way it happens so I said here we go reverse pivot because it sets up it's so important you have to understand he's running the ball right now you could do that but I typically don't like just pitching the ball and having him just run that way because if he runs that way it almost sets him up to get hit um, it doesn't give him enough lead blockers the fullback there but this doesn't work so you always have to do the inside block running the opposite way granted he's running by himself but the quarter the whole team is running the opposite direction keep your players safe reverse pivot he just showing you a reverse pivot because key for this boom the counter you're gonna run Rhino which is the inside play motion to the right you're gonna run rocket which is gonna be the outside play still motioning guys gonna run to the right quarterbacks hitting you're gonna do razor you're gonna do lion you're gonna do lightning you're gonna do rocket again you're gonna be about six plays in your seventh play you're gonna be on third down and about four most football is about breakaways but you're about third and four and then you're gonna run counter because you're gonna see these guys start to predict the motion you're gonna hear the coach yell here comes the motion I'm gonna give you a little bit of um, lessons that I've learned through time in football you guys might know them this is passed down to me and things that I've learned um, one in youth football you get about 20 or 30 plays per game so that's why if a quarterback can't take a snap he can't play quarterback um, if he fumbles two or three times a game every game I'm sorry you have to work on it or this is not the position you can we love this to share it to everybody and be happy but this is where we have to actually learn what people can do and can't do. Certain things are hard for people to do. You know, some kids can't catch. I've thrown, put kids at tight end, gave them 10 opportunities. They were 0 for 10. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Go 0 for 70? I mean, the kid has to work on it. When he finally can start catching the ball, got to move him in. But game time, we're trying to be productive. I keep trying. You got to keep trying them. But quarterback, no, can't risk the game, right? So, get about 20 or 30 plays per game typically you're not marching down the field you're not going one two three first down one two first down one two three first down that's not happening you're not running 14 plays uh, and you have four sets of downs at third or fourth grade what's going to happen is you're going to have a busted play you're going to maybe get a first down a second down you're going to have a busted play and the guy's going to run for 30 yards and score a touchdown or 60 yards and score a touchdown or he's going to get stopped at the two yard line and they're going to run for a two yard touchdown that's what's going to happen every possession is going to be about four to eight plays either going to get stopped or you're going to get a touchdown this is how it works out for a decade maybe five percent are different but 95 percent of the time that is it so play to what's going to happen that's why in the youth football typically you don't throw at a younger age you wait till you get a little older because you only get 20 or 30 plays and if you take one away and you're going to lose your turnovers it's basically giving the game away and losing so even when you throw the ball we do a rocket fake and a pass it's really really safe the right time when to do it everything has to be because the defensive players are too good they can intercept anything the lines aren't great enough and the defensive players are too good so it's hard to block anybody to give you time to throw the ball so you're putting a quarterback at risk to stand there trying to throw the ball and just get tackled by somebody so and every throws are pretty much a, um, a three flies up a 50 50 ball and once again you're trying to win and a turnover is pretty much game over for you two turnovers man you better hope the other team's not very good because that's gonna pretty much win the game for you so the second rule is kickoffs 
Typically, any kid on the field can run back a touchdown on a kickoff, so don't kick the ball off to him and let him score a touchdown. I say 99 times out of 100, if you kick the ball off at a kickoff, the kid gets the ball and scores a touchdown. So do an onside kick, give your chance to get the ball over. Like I said, it's going to be a busted play, so just try to stop them from getting a first down. Try to get the turnover on downs and even on a punt. Don't try to return the punt. They fumble the punt. When they kick the ball to you, your punt return team should run off the field because when the offense touches the ball, the ball's dead anyways. Limit the amount of dumb plays that you have. Do an, do an onside kick. Maybe you get a fumble, you get the ball back. But definitely, like I said, they're not going to march down the field. They're not running 10 plays. for If they're on 50-yard line, that's five first downs or four first downs. They're not going to run 12 or 14 plays. It could happen. But more than likely, it's not going to happen. So be smart and do those things. But that's just my recommendation on this. Key is pivot, reverse pivot, pitch. Look up Jalen Hurts. Reverse pivot pitch is important. You can't dumb down the play because it has to look this way for this counter. So you're doing the, see how he turns his back, reverse pivot, and he leaves out blocks because it looks like, Every other play, just like that. Let me get rid of me. All of me up there already. Sniffer takes one step to the right. The wing prepares to get the ball and follow the fullback slash sniffer. And then the wing puts a big hand up above his head so everybody can see it above the offensive line. Everybody got to see his hand. They got to think, oh, he's getting the ball. That's why he has his hand up. He's catching it and running. He wants to get tackled as if he did have the ball. But he doesn't have the ball. And that's okay. We want him to trick him. And then handoff underneath. That would be your, like your seventh or eighth play. Your team will understand. It happens over and over again. It'll be like, counter, here it comes. So like I said, it's like a yin and yang. The sniffer takes one step as the reverse pivot comes in. Pitch underneath. See, big hands. It's very important to the play. Here we go right here. Pitch underneath, very important. Pitch underneath, fake big hands. Here we go again. Laser. Motion, one, boom. I said, you here, down, set, go. Down, set, go. Everybody's running. Everybody's going. Reverse pivot, counter. Um, sweet. That's how I think I do it. So anyways, I'm Ruben from legendspodcasting.com. If you email me at legendspodcasting at gmail.com, I have a copy of the PDF and Risk Coach. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and um, get kids to love football.